Welcome to Bar Chart series of educational webinars designed to enlighten you on a variety of trading ideas and concepts, inform you of the features and tools Bar Chart provides related to these concepts, as well as offer you some traders' insight to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's session managing markets with bull call debit spreads. Uh, this vertical call spread or long call spread is very popular among options traders who have a bullish outlook of an underlying asset. Now, traders like the versatility of the bull call spreads, limited risk, limited reward capabilities to frame trades depending on their bullishness bias and still maintain a balanced approach to risk and reward. Hello, everyone. My name is John Rowland, and I am Bar Chart's Head of Trading Education. And the bull call spread is one of my favorite option strategies because it allows me both to profit as an asset price goes up without that large capital outlay to purchase the underlying asset. In other words, trade expensive stocks on the cheap. Now I know my dollar cost risk coming into the trade and I have a clear point to which I know where I'll start making money and a well-defined target that gives me permission to close the trade. Now, however, like all option strategies, it's essential that we have an understanding of the underlying asset, options pricing, specific risks and advantages that are associated with this strategy. Now, keep in mind that while today is an introductory webinar, we will cover most of the basics. I'm also going to share some of the considerations I use setting up this strategy while using Bar Charts Options Screener. So stick around as I show you how to take your bullish outlook to the next level. Now, before we get started, Please welcome Bar Charts Project Director and our moderator, Gene Baker. Hello, Gene. Good afternoon, John. How are you? I am well, and I hope you are as well. Yeah, coming back from a little week's vacation and getting back into things. So, rested. Go ahead. I was going to say, rested and raring to go, then, right? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Just a reminder, if anybody has questions for John during the session, feel free to pass them along in the questions box and I'll pass them on to John. Awesome, Gene. All right, you guys ready to get started? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Just remind you that today's session is for educational purposes only and decisions to buy, sell or hold or trade securities, commodities or any other investment should be involved and are best made on the advice of a qualified financial advisor. Now, options trading is not for everyone, and you can lose uh, the loss of your principal. And so under no circumstances shall we be liable for any loss or damages that you incur from any trading or investment activity that is based on information or material that you receive through bar chart and or our services. Okay. So what is a bull call spread? Well, it's a vertical spread, meaning that we have two strikes where one is below the other strike. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy the lower strike and we're gonna sell the higher strike of the same expiration date. Now, how pricing of calls is, the lower call is always gonna cost more than the higher call. And that means that we're gonna incur a cost, hence the term debit. Now, selling the higher call caps our profit potential, though it does help to offset the costs of the lower call, thereby limiting our dollar risk. Now, here's a setup of a bull call trade that I set up on October 31st, Halloween for Microsoft. So we're gonna purchase the lower strike, the 335 call at a cost of $19.00 of 50 cents and at the same time we're going to sell the higher strike call the 370 call and we're going to collect four dollars and 95 cents so our total cost is going to be that 
debit that we paid out and the credit that we took in. In this case, uh, that will be $14.55. And that is what is termed as our maximum loss risk. We can't lose any more than that amount. Now, break even will equal the lower strike plus the cost of the spread. So in this case, that would be the 335 plus the 1455. And that would give us a value of 349.55. Now later, I'm going to show you a break even. I'm just going to round it up to 350. So don't get confused. That's the actual value based on Microsoft of an entry price of $336 on the day that I set this up. Now, maximum problem, which I neglected to put into this slide, is the strike differential, difference between our two strikes, and minus the cost. So the difference between our two strikes is $35. The cost is $14.55. Therefore, our maximum profit would be $20.45. Now, that is on a per share basis. Remember that one option controls 100 shares of a stock. So if we look at this in terms of real dollar values, we'd have to times all of these values by uh, 100. So what are some of the advantages of a bull call spread? Well, first, you know, the cost of entry to take control of 100 shares of stock or one option is a fraction of the cost of purchasing those 100 shares. But in theory, the stock price could fall and expose the stock owner to that downside risk. Now, the option trader is not void of risk, but our risk is limited. And because of the cost of the offset of selling that higher call, the bull call spread will outperform the purchase of an outright call at expiration. Now, as long as, as the underlying stock price doesn't rise above the higher strike. So let's look at that. So again, for a profit loss comparison, we, we're gonna use the value of $336, and this is what the values were at the time when I set this trade up. So let's first look at the initial cost, which is down here. If I buy 100 shares of Microsoft at $336, that's going to cost me $33,600. But my options, my outright call at 335 call, if I purchase that call, that's going to cost me $1,950. And if I do the spread that we showed in that setup, that's going to cost us $1,455. So let's see what happens on different scenarios of price at expiration. So if the price of the stock is at $335, which is our lower strike value, the owner of the shares will lose $100. The outright calls will expire worthless, and that trader will lose $1,950. The bull call spread will lose $1,450. Now, if the stock price falls to $325, well, the outright share owner is gonna lose $1,000. But notice that both the option strategies, their loss is limited to their initial uh, cost. Now, if the stock gets to break even based on our setup of our call spread, which was 350, notice that our ownership will make $1,400, our outright call uh, purchaser will be still down $450 and our bull call spread will be at break even or in this case, that breakage that I had about $45. Now, if the stock price at 370 at the expiration, that higher strike, our ownership will make $3,400. Our outright call will make $1,550 and our call spread will make $2,045. And so you can see here that how the advantage of a bull call spread does have a greater advantage to an outright call because of that credit that we took in. Now, if the stock price goes up to 380, our ownership will make uh, 4,400. Our outright call uh, 
purchaser will make 25.50. And notice that our uh, call spread will be capped at that value of 20.45. Now, looking at this, you might say to yourself, well, what is, it, what is the advantage of trading options? Because I can see that in terms of dollar values, that it looks like it's more advantageous to be an owner of the stock. Well, there's a couple things here. First of all, look at the cost here of buying 100 shares, 33,000, where the cost of buying these two option strategies is a fraction of that. And the return on investment based on that 370 value, right? We only get a 10% return on our money on outright ownership. But the power of options, the power of the leverage of options, you know, our outright long call would make 79.5% and our call spread will make 140.55%. So, you know, all option trades or all trades have some types of risk. And so let's look at the risk of a bull call spread. So, you know, if the stock price falls, right, um, then we're going to lose that initial capital outlay, but it is limited to our initial costs. Now, break even is the risk of not making money until price gets above the lower strike plus our costs. Now, time is also a risk in options and sometimes referred to as theta or theta risk. Now, because all options are de depreciating assets every day, they decrease in value, all things being equal. But as we get closer to expiration, the greater the depreciation will excuse me, the greater they will depreciate. Now the guideline here from a trader's perspective is that for time decay, up until about 40 days prior to expiration, theta has a relatively minimal impact on the value of options. Between 40 and 20 days, then that impact uh, becomes a little bit greater. And then inside of 20 days before expiration, then theta becomes very impactful. So as a trader's guideline here, time is money. In other words, the more time I buy, it's gonna cost me more money. But the trade-off is the longer the time I buy allows that asset to appreciate. Now there's something called expiration risk, and which is the concept that as we approach the day of expiration and the lower strike looks to finish in the money and the upper strike is not, then the standard practice our broker might do was they will exercise that lower option on our behalf, assuming we have enough capital to cover the purchase costs. Otherwise, your broker is probably going to tell you, hey, you know, you have these options that are expiring, you need to liquidate them. And then if you don't liquidate them in a timely manner, and it depends on broker to broker, but it's usually about two hours prior to expiration, um, they will liquidate that for you. So the best practice really for this spread is to close out before expiration if the upper strike is still out of the money. Now, because uh, we're not getting to the upper strike and we're closing out before expiration, we won't achieve that maximum profit. So again, a guideline for you could be is as I'm approaching expiration, if I can collect somewhere between 80 to 95% of the maximum uh, profit, you know, a couple of days prior to expiration, then I'm probably gonna close that trade out and move on and find another trade. All right, so let's talk about strike selection. Now, when I mention the word aggressive and conservative, what I'm really actually implying here is our bullishness, our confidence that price is going to rise. So 
aggressive or moderately bullish selections, we're going to choose a lower strike that is at the money and a higher strike that is out of the money. Now, typically, this is the favored combination among our options traders that employ this strategy. Now, if we're extremely bullish, and then we're going to choose both strikes out of the money. Now, this will increase our profit potential, but it also increases the probability that we're not going to achieve break even or maybe even profitability. A more conservative strike placement would be the lower strike in the money and the higher strike out of the money. Now, this will increase our costs, it will lower our profit potential but it does increase the chance of breaking even and profitability. Now, an ultra conservative uh, selection, maybe I'm confident that prices won't fall, but I'm not particularly sure how high it will rise. Well, this would entail both strikes in the money. Now, this dramatically increases the cost and lowers our profit, but the trade-off is if price stays the same, virtually guaranteeing break-even and profits. Now, the decision on selection uh, needs to weigh our options. And I don't may mean that to be a pun, but what I'm saying really is our, on our bullishness plus a few uh, variables that we can talk about. And this is what we're going to work on as we go further in today's session. So when we look to decide on strike placement, I don't want to put a lot of emphasis, emphasis on max profit because it's going to favor those strikes that are out of the money. And remember, those strikes that are out of the money have uh, less chance of success. Now, Part of our process of determining what strikes to choose, well, what we can do is a very simple rule here is we're going to look at the at the money call and determine what the time premium is. And we're going to use that as a value. We're going to double that to help us determine our strike differential. Now, volatility increases the time premium. In other words, the higher the volatility, the higher the cost. So part of our process in terms of candidates, not necessarily in strike selection, but at least it'll give me a better understanding of what I'm dealing with in terms of the cost and the collection, I might look at uh, rank and percentile, and that will help me determine if option prices are fair or evaluated. In other words, if I'm buying an option, I want fair value. And so what I want to see is our rank and our percentiles for our implied volatility to be low. And I'll know that that is a fair value. And then there's this seesaw, this scale between probability and profits. The higher the probability, the lower the profits. The higher the profits, the lower the probability. All right. So where do you find the bull call spread screener or where do we start our process so there's two places you can find it first of all i'm under options and and then the advanced grouping you have bull call debit spreads and that's what i pulled up here but we can go to any equity any etf that uh, actively trades options and in the column over the left you can go down here where it says credit and debit and bull call spreads. So here's uh, our screener and our screener right now, currently at 120 Eastern time, it's 
pulling up 439 candidates. Now, how does it determine that? Well, we have some set filters that are our default filters for our screener, our bull call screener. Now we're gonna go through these and I'm gonna show you how to maybe you can make a couple of little manipulations, but we'll, ultimately what we're gonna work towards here is I wanna show you how to build a template screener that you can apply to all um, assets and that you can just make some minor adjustments to that template to really help you to narrow down and define uh, those strike combinations that uh, you want. So first of all, let's go look at our default. So again, 462 or whatever it was, that might be a lot to uh, shift, slip, sift through. Yeah, you know, a wide range of different uh, uh, stocks and a wide range of different strike combinations. So, you know, one of the easy ways we, we could just say, hey, let's just look at NASDAQ. Uh, days to expiration. Well, um, again, there's a state of thought that the longer that we hold on to an option or the more time we buy, the more chance we could get our price to move to our maximum uh, profit. Um, again, the, you don't need to have a high days to expiration but this is kind of that in that wheelhouse where you know um the theta is not going to have much effect on us the other thing here is why we pick monthlies is if i'm trading out 60 days or 70 or 80 or 100 days you know the monthly options uh, are probably ones that are going to be a little bit more active in terms of volume and quitty and that would be important for us in terms of our bid asks uh, to enter and exit the market. The security type, obviously we're looking at stocks, but again, we could change this to let's say ETFs. And then let's look at these uh, next few ones. Leg uh, volume one and volume and open niches for leg one, and volume and open niches for leg two. So the reason why we put these in here is this really helps to weed out a lot of stocks that don't have the options uh, that um, uh, auction activity that would be conducive to spread trading. In other words, you know, you're trading two different legs and they have wide bids and asks, you know, you're going to have a lot of slippage. So that's the reason why we use this in our. But what I'm going to say to you is if we're trading, actively trading markets, markets that um, support a large daily options volume and our bid asks are nice and tight, then this these four uh, inputs are not as critical in our development of looking for, you know, how ways to manipulate this screener. But it's important for you if, or critical for you, especially if you're trading what I would say a less active um, stock or ETF. Moneyness is just another word of where is our strike placed in regards to current price. So the rule here is that a positive moneyness is in the money and a negative moneyness is out of the money. And so you can see that our bull calls spread a screener ba is based on at the money to in the money. And again, that might not be the criteria that we want in terming, determining our bullishness or selection. And then we have break even probability. And this is the probability of getting to that break even volume. Now, what we'll look at as we go through a couple of these screeners is a higher probability is not generally a good thing. It just means that we're probably gonna get a much lower uh, profit. So there is this balance between probability, break even probability, and this kind of this give and take. So let's do this. Let's just, just make one adjustment here. So all I've done is now I'm looking at NASDAQ and I'm lowering my probability to between 25 and 75%. And let's see what that result is. 
And we're going to go from 339. Oh, <laughs> it actually went up. That's kind of funny that it did that. But still a lot of, a lot of candidates. But let's look at that probability notion. Um, so let's here, I'm just going to sort based on probability. And so again, look at these uh, trades that have a very high probability. And again, you know, if you think about it in terms of chance, you know, about two, two thirds of a chance that it's going to happen. But, you know, look at Apple here, this first example an Apple, 72 probability, right? And where are our strikes? Well, our strikes are at 165 and 175. And where's our current price? 182. In the money. In the money tend to have higher probabilities, chance of success. But notice our profit much, much lower, only uh, $1.65 based on this $10 uh, strike differential. If we go to the other way and we look at lower probabilities, right? And again, let's just use the Apple here. Here we can see Apple current price is around 182. And here we have a strike probability, a lower strike of 180 and a higher strike of 225, a differential of $45, right? Uh, a much lower probability of getting to maximum profit. But again, look at our risk to reward ratio is a lot higher. So this give and take of probability and um, our strike placement. Now, what I might do here is I might go through these and I'll look at some of these candidates based on the uh, strike differential and also that profit and loss potential. And I might find a certain candidate that, you know, I, I like or I'm familiar with um, in terms of its market. So for instance, let's like look at Amazon here. So here's one where, you know, current price is around 141 and we have a strike differential of around $35. And it looks like, you know, we're going to risk $8.20 to make $26.80, which would be about a uh, 326% return or about a three to one risk to reward ratio. And that might be a good strike combination or a risk reward ratio that I like, but maybe it's not um, because I'm familiar with Amazon. And I know that maybe I don't think it's going to get $35 in that time frame. So what I can do is I can come over here to these three little dots here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for more examples based on this, this candidate that I just found, in this case, Amazon. And it's gonna take me right to the Amazon uh, debit spread page, this bull call spread page. And then it's gonna give me all of the different combinations of strikes, and uh, differentials that are possible. And you can see that again, a very low probability of success, our strikes are way out of the money, but look at that profit potential. So uh, again, reiterating, re reiterating what we we're talking about, this probability assessment. So this is where what I want this webinar to be more about as I, said in the beginning, let's screen on this candidate and let's develop a template that we can use that we're gonna use for all of our markets. So the template we're going to build is gonna be this template, all right? And so the slides that I have here are, will be attached to the webinar and you'll have access to this, but you can just take a screenshot when we take, when we get to um, that process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to screen on this. And I'm gonna look at the screeners. Now notice it takes those results that we got and then here's the basics of our screener right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a few more things. Well, first of all, we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and add in our probability because that is important to us with the strategy notice that we do have a max profit probability if you want to play with that 
So again, I said on the break even here, we showed you a couple of examples, you know, maybe above 75 is probably not conducive to a good trade, you know, because it might have a lot of risk, dollar risk, and I'm not gonna get a lot, a lot of a reward. Let's go to Delta. And we're going to look at something called net delta. Now, what de net delta does for us is a couple of things. First of all, it softens the sensitivity of price movement. Now, that has pluses and minuses. As the stock price falls, it will soften it on the downside, which is a good thing. But on the upside, it will take a longer t period of time for this strategy to um, start to develop, start to uh, reward us. So again, in a trader's guideline here, um, I just find that when I'm setting these kind of trades up, I like to find net deltas in that 25 to 35 range. Now, I just find that these are more successful. And then also when I start to break these trades down, those strike differentials that these net deltas create, um, the risk reward probability combination or is right in that level that I feel comfortable taking. Again, this is my own personal preference. And you know, you can try it on, see if it works for you. Then we're going to go to options information. And I'm going to go to strike. And I'm going to look at my strike differential. Now I'm going to add that. And I want a value. In other words, I want to use a range of um, different strikes to help me define uh, this trade. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to at the money calls. And I, I hinted on this in the slide before. And we're going to look at the time premium at, at the money calls. And we're going to use that is a way to kind of measure how wide we want to set our strike differentials. We'll come back to strike price again, and then I'm going to add leg one. Again, I want to use a range of price. Here again, you know, that bullishness that I'm going to, I'm going to take a strike that is a lower strike that's out of the money, at the money, or in the money. Now you can do this with, instead of using a range, on strike one in using that moneyness, which I showed you on our um, our defaults, that in the money, out of the money. Um, but you hear again, you can see this is done on a percentage basis. And so if I'm trading like a stock that's like $375 and I'm going, okay, what's 5% or 3% or we'll go, you know, I wanna be $3 below or whatever. You know, maybe it might give me too wide of candidates or it doesn't allow me to really narrow in. So it's a good, it's just a preference as far as a trader is concerned, um, but you can achieve the same result uh, using moneyness. Then we're gonna add in our um, expiration, days to expiration. And again, that, idea that theta right is uh you know the theta is less in the longer terms and also this idea that if i'm going to trade out into the future i want to trade more of these monthly expirations and then finally i'm just going to type in the word security and i'm going to pick the security type now this is more about what i want to add to my templates when we save this template so that I can jump between stocks and ETFs. Now we are looking at Amazon, so we know we're trading a stock. Again, this is more about what we want to add to our template. So let's look at our results. Whoops, what did I do wrong? Oh, okay, yeah, so our results are still up there at 460. What have we done? Well, we haven't qualified our uh, parameters. So let's do that. So under Amazon, the first thing we want to do is kind of decide what our strike differential is. 
So I'm going to go back to Amazon and I'm going to go under volatility in Greeks here. And remember, we are trading the January 19, and I could pick a different uh, expiration, but this is that one that was 70 days out. And then I'm going to look at the at the monies. A really easy way to come right in here is these green lines are always the at the money calls. And so the current price here is 142. So this one is a little bit out of the money, right? Um, this one is in the money. So what in theory, what you would do is you would look at the in the money and you would subtract that intrinsic value. How much is it in the money? In this case, let's say $2 from our theoretical value. So $2 from $8.55, that leaves us $6.55. So that is telling us that if we double it, we'll probably wanna start thinking about strike differentials, you know, around $13. Now I don't have to use that as a hard number. I can just say, hey, let's use that as kind of a guideline of, uh, a range. So if it's around $13, let's say something between $10 and $15. The other thing I might do as I'm doing this process, I might go back to our price overview and look at my options overview. And I can get it um, over here as well. Um, look at my percent and rankings of these options based on the implied current implied volatility. And you can see that uh, in case of Amazon, our percentile and rankings are at the lowest end of the range. That's telling us that our options are very fairly priced and probably even be, are probably a little on the cheap side. Now, that might mean that it, my cost might be a little bit less, but also remember that credit that I'm going to try to capture might also be a lot less. And then finally, what I might do is just look and a chart to give me kind of an idea of where and how bullish I'm going to be. So currently we're at 142. And, you know, I might say, well, you know, there's a couple of levels of resistance just right here, we're at 46. And we said our strike differential was going to be closer to, you know, between 10 and $15. So let's make the assumption that we're going to be a little bit more bullish. And we think it's price is going to break out of these highs. And, you know, where would be the next level of resistance? And we can see there's a little bit of resistance over here around that 155, 156 area. So that would make sense from 140, $15 would that would be a good target for us uh, to think. But if I wanted to be very conservative, I could say, hey, I don't think price is going to fall below, let's say 135, and maybe I would use, you know, this, these highs as that upper strike. But let's go uh, with the, the more bullish scenario. So current price is around, you know, $1.40. So let's go back to our strike differential. We said we're going to use somewhere between 10 and 15. And our leg strike. Well, again, how far do I want to go on the mark money? Let's use something, let's say 138 on the downside, about three dollars below current price, four dollars below current price, and maybe we'll go just slightly in the money. We'll go up to say one uh forty-five. And now let's check that results. Now we only have 23. Very, very manageable for us to start looking at it. So at this point here, again, I might sort these by probability and look at which ones have a higher probability and check out the risk reward. Again, notice that some of these that have a high probability, right? depends on what of our strike differential is, a narrow strike differential, right? But that also lowers our profitability. The wider strike differential, here we see 140, 155, gives us a higher profit, but a lower probability. So again, th at this point, it's really up to the trader about how bullish they are, how, how wide of a strike probability they want. Based on the, at the money, 
you know, somewhere around maybe 12 or 13 would be a good value, which would be right here, 140 to 152.50. And then look at our max loss, max profits, our profitability. Now, another rule you can use is I want to make sure that my cost, my max loss, my cost, and my strike problem, strike differential is at least double. In other words, if I have a cost of here about $5.68, I want to make sure my uh, I have a strike differential that's greater than two times that. Again, you know, this $12.50 would fall into that category. Another thing you can do is you can look at um, the filter view. Remember we put in that net delta? And so kind of a general rule here is when I'm looking at uh, probabilities and net deltas, I kind of want to lean towards those that have lower net deltas and higher probabilities. Now, it's not a hard, fast rule for me. It's just that I tend to find that's the one that's going to give me that right strike differential and also going to give me a good um, uh, probability to risk to reward. And again, notice if we did that based on the 140 strike, right? that would give us that 12 and a half. Remember I said how that 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 net delta kind of bakes in that uh, strike differential that is probably is the one that we want to choose. And so that was probably the, this would probably be the strategy that I would use for Amazon. So let's go back to, at this point here, what I could do is I could save these parameters, right? and these parameters that are unique to Amazon. I could do that through the results, save the screener. But again, this screener would be unique uh, to Amazon. So what I did for the webinar is I created a webinar bull call, and that's in the one that's in the slides. And let's go to that. And there it is those components that we just talked about, the symbol, the security type, the days to expiration, the strike price leg one, the strike differential, the net delta, and the break even probability. All right, so let's put this to the test. So let's look at, let's say, an equity. Let's go to the Qs, okay? And we're not trading a stock. We're trading an ETF. We're not changing our days to expiration. What we need to find is we're, how we're going to price this out in terms of our strike leg and our strike differential. So I, I've already teed up the cues here. And here's the January monthly, again, um, that one that is 72 days out. Here's our at the money. Here, here we are currently, the current price is 372.46. Our at the money, 372. Our uh, theoretical value is $13.60. We have about 40 cents of intrinsic value in the money. So let's just make this easy for us and say, okay, two times the theoretical value of the at the money call, $13 of time premium would give us a strike differential of around $26. Am I getting a fair pricing? Yeah, it looks like it, right? Our rank and a percentile are very low we're getting a pretty good fair pricing. Let's go to the chart. And, you know, what do we kind of see? And then uh, those of you who are premium members or plus members, we have a show on Fridays called Market and Close. And this is one of the charts that we looked at recently in this downward channel that it looks like we've just broken out of. And that is around 370. And the height of this channel is around 390, so about a $20 move. What did our um, at the money call say? Well, our at the money call said $26. So is this a realistic or a, a probable event on this breakout of a, a move between $20 and let's say $26? I think that is a fair assessment. So let's do that. Let's put in a strike differential of 20. 
and we'll just go up to let's say twenty-seven dollars. We'll just add one dollar just so we can capture that twenty-six. Now our strike price, right? Again, how bullish we are. Well, remember we just broke out above three seventy, so let's use that as our anchor, three seventy. So let's go maybe a couple of dollars below three seventy. Um, so let's we'll say three sixty eight. That's about four dollars about from current price. And let's say you go a little bit, a couple of dollars above. Let's go three seventy five. And what do we get? Sixty four uh, potential candidates. And again, what I could do here is I could tighten this up. I could sort by uh, the strikes, right? Uh, here's the 370s. Let's look at that 370, 390, right? And, um, you know, I got a 40% probability. It's going to cost me $9. I'm going to make $10. So it's only going to get about, you know, 100%. Again, a trader's guideline here for you is I try to get as close as I can to 150. I just find that that's a good uh value for me no again if i can get more than 150 uh that's much better but again for me to get uh, a higher uh max profit of 150 i'm probably going to either have to widen the strike differential or i'm gonna have to go farther out of the money so looking at the 370s right and if i want to try to get close to 150 Right, maybe the better one was that that 26 strike differential, 373.96. We get 122, excuse me, 126 as our uh, profitability. You know, our uh, probability is 38, 37.8 or 38 percent, risking $11.49 to make $14.51. Okay, so again. Um, for those of you who are interested under our bull call, let me reset this. Those are the parameters that we use. And again, this is in our uh, slide deck. So again, this is really kind of how we can use this template to help us refine our bull call strategy. So I see a lot of questions and Gene, so let me take a moment here, but maybe, I, I, then I forgot to ask you this in our, in our green room session, Gene, is that this advanced um, screening is for premier members only. That's correct, right? Yes, that's correct, John. Uh, I was going to say, while well, you review the questions that, uh, the option screeners, all of our different option screening strategies are part of a bar chart premier membership. Uh, if you are not a premier member and if you would like to take a free 30-day test trial to try out these screeners, uh, specifically this bull call debit spread that John's talking about today, uh, feel free to do so. There are a number of sign-up links all through our site. You get 30 days uh, to try out not just the option screeners, but everything else on the site, and uh, can make up your mind after that whether the subscription is right for you. So if you haven't tried it, we certainly encourage you to do that. So I see a lot of questions, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going through a lot of these, and I think we we answered uh, most of them. One of the ones that you know, talk about Delta, how in Delta is important. I said that that net Delta, you know, that trader's aspect that I bring to the table is that in that 25 to 35, I find that if I use that as my guidepost, it's going to put me in that right strike differential that is going to bring me uh, a greater probability of success in the long run. A couple of nice comments there. Thanks. Richard says about how he's grateful for this um, and how we're a little bit more detailed than he would get into a YouTube. So Richard, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Um, how accurate are the probabilities? Well, I'm not a math person, Tony, um, 
the math is just basically standard. And again, I think this is a this is a how options are priced. If you're interested in that, I do think we do have uh, the formula somewhere in here, right, Gene? I think so. There it is. Yep. There's how we calculate um, the probability. So, I mean, this is just basic standard option pricing. Okay. All right. If I didn't answer your question, um, we are running out of time a little bit here. If I didn't answer your question, send them to support at um, barchart.com. I'm going to tell you that a couple of the support guys are former options traders. So they will definitely be able to get you any answers to questions that you might have. Okay. So a couple of takeaways here. So a bull call spread is one of the more easier uh, spread trades out there. And it's one of the more popular ones. Now it's best suited in a generally bullish environment. Remember that the lower strike selection determines how aggressive or conservative the trader wants to be. The strike differential should generally be twice the initial cost. We gave you those two examples, either the at the money time premium or this two times our strike uh, different, excuse me, our two times our initial cost. Again, the more we can get out of it, the better um, in terms of profit. Now, probability and potential profit are inverse relationship, right? That, 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 that scale, that seesaw as we look at um, our trade-offs. Now, remember that net delta kind of bakes in that strike selection, that strike differential. That was one of the questions we had. And that strike placements are both components that influence both probability and profitability. And the final takeaway that I think is really important here is that maximum profit can only be achieved if the price of the underline is at or above the higher strike at expiration. Now, if the price is way above the higher strike at the expiration, you know, staying holding that trade and getting your max uh, profit, fine. But the example of that expiration risk that if we're close to our higher strike as we're coming to expiration. You know, if I can capture that 80% or 90% of maximum profit, you know, I've pretty gotten most of the juice out of that orange, so to speak. And let's, you know, let's close out that trade and look for a, a greater opportunity. Okay. And so, you know, as Gene mentioned before, that we do have um, free trial memberships. And you can try out the preview membership for 30 days. And again, a lot of the stuff that I just showed you, all of this option screening is a premier membership uh, subscription is um, required. But I love the bull call spread because, and what I try to show you here is that it allows me to trade some of these more expensive stocks. And there's certainly a lot of them in these days allows me to trade them on the cheap where I can profit just as much as or even greater than uh, outright only with a fraction of the cost. All right, Gene, I think that's it for today. Anything else? Did I forget anything? Next week, we don't have a upcoming webinar. I think we're going to be off for a couple weeks until after Thanksgiving. But all of our webinars do um, end up into our archives or on our YouTube channel. And since you're gonna try out that membership for 30 days, one of the other features that we have uh, for our premier members, we have a show called Market on Close on Fridays that we look at a lot of macro, a big picture, and then we kind of try to break those down and see if we can find some trading ideas or opportunities you know, either based on some of the pages or tools that we have on Barcher page or based on, you know, information that we can gather outside about the market. So a lot of our premier members like this show and it's definitely one of the benefits of being a premier and plus member to check that out. So come in and check that out if you get a chance. Well, that hour went pretty fast, Gene. Okay. 
Well, listen, folks, thank you for joining. I hope you appreciate um, and you got something out of today's session. Uh, stay safe out there, be healthy, and the good of all trading.